One of the biggest surprises for me on my trip to Dollywood was their new for 2019 edition Dragonflyer, a Vacoma family suspended coaster which is part of the brand new section known as Wildwood Grove. As you enter the front gate of the park and walk beyond Thunderhead and toward Mystery Mine, you will come upon a separate path leading uphill off to the left of the midway across from the Mystery Mine entrance. This takes you to Wildwood Grove, the new, vibrant family area of Dollywood, which covers five acres of land. Once entering Wildwood Grove, to get to Dragonflyer, you will need to make your way to the back of this section, and Dragonflyer's entrance is located close to the gorgeous Wildwood Tree. One thing to take note of with Dragonflyer is that it is designed so that it can only operate with one train, seeing as the brakes are in the station. Due to this, lines tend to be very long. I only got one ride on this because of that reason, and I waited nearly an hour for it. It was actually a night ride, as this was the best time to ride it as the line was much shorter than during the day. I seen the line get as big as an hour and a half during our three days at Dollywood. Taking all of this into consideration, I highly suggest getting to both this and Mystery Mine first thing during the day due to their capacity issues. Once waiting and entering the station, you board these very comfortable trains which consist of 10 rows of two riders. And unlike the old Vacoma family suspended coasters which feature over the shoulder restraints that bang your head around, thus being known as hanging bangs, Dragonflyer has the newer trains that have a nice comfy lap bar which comes down from above which reminded me a lot of mock rides coasters such as Copperhead Strike. You depart the station and take a turn to the left and rise up the 63 foot tall lift hill. You immediately hit a 65 foot drop into an underground tunnel reaching a top speed of 47 miles per hour. You then go through this really steep overbank turn to the right with some nice whip followed by a small bend to the right then a fast 360 degree helix to the left. You will then rise up and bend a bit, then go through another 360 degree left helix, and following this one, you hit a flat 180 degree bank turn to the right, dip down a bit, rise up, and bank right and fly back into the station where your journey reaches its conclusion on its 1486 feet of track. What took me by surprise with Dragonflyer is how forceful the first half is. You are hitting some pretty strong positive G's, especially during that overbank turn, and you just haul through that first half of the ride at a crazy pace. I would say this portion of the ride is extremely thrilling for a family coaster, but the second half is paced much more moderately and does feel like a true family coaster, but certainly isn't lacking in fun whatsoever. This is a really well done layout and ride experience for a family coaster in my opinion. Another thing that I find shocking is how much this coaster feels like it really fits in at Dollywood. This is a clone model and several exact copies operate around the world in various countries, but Dragonflyer feels like it was designed to uniquely fit into this plot of land in the park, especially with how it uses the terrain in that area a bit. This ride just looks stunning as well. Even though it isn't very tall itself, due to the terrain at Dollywood, the ride is elevated above many other rides nearby, and you can see it all around this area, and the bright green track and dark blue supports just look visually fantastic. Overall, Dragonflyer is just presented very nicely in conjunction with Wildwood Grove. There isn't much of a noticeable theme present with the coaster though. It does have a theme, which apparently is mimicking the flight of a smoky mountain dragonfly, according to the park's website, but I honestly was not aware of this whatsoever while actually on or around the ride and in the queue. This isn't a problem for me, but just an observation, as this is one of the lighter themed rides at Dollywood. I think the closest thing to theming I noticed was just the signage around the ride, but essentially, the theming is the name and the logo. Like I said, no complaints here because of how well it is presented and it just fits in this area to a T. As far as the ride experience, it is so smooth and comfortable. Unlike the old Vacoma hang and bang such as Kitty Hawk or Flying Ace Aerial Chase, this one doesn't beat your head around on unnecessary over the shoulder restraints and this is also glossy smooth. I think the length of the ride is just right for a family coaster. It could be a bit longer, but it's actually a good thing that it isn't because of only operating with one train. The capacity would just be that much worse if the ride were 10 or 15 seconds longer, plus I'm not sure the train could maintain good pacing for much longer anyway. For Dragonflyer's score, I am going to give it a personal score of a very solid 7 out of 10. 
However, to give this a score purely as a family coaster, it is a perfect 10 out of 10 in my mind. This is a really fun, smooth, and pretty forceful family coaster that a lot of people can actually ride since it has the 39 inch height requirement, making this a family coaster. Dragonflyer is a ride that I would suggest not skipping on your next trip to Dollywood. In a park that has a solid collection of family coasters, this one stands strongly at the top of those in my opinion. Have you ridden Dragonflyer and what are your thoughts on it? Be sure to let me know and also check out my many other coaster reviews in a playlist on my channel and subscribe for more roller coaster and amusement park related content twice a week. Like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. Thank you all for watching. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.